I want to talk about how to get good landscape uh, source material and how to take good photographs of landscapes. And very quickly before I do that, I want to tell you guys that I've been uh, working on an online academy of art for over a year now and really have been working on it uh, earnestly for the last year and was going to launch it in the next month or two. But now I've upped that uh, date uh, that we're going to launch it and it's going to be um, happening hopefully in about two or three days. Um, the site will be up and you guys can sign up for online uh, classes with, my, with me. This is like video conferencing and it's really an online academy. And I thought it'd be no better time than now with the quarantine going on and everything um, that we would uh, launch this new Academy of Art. So you guys uh, look for that and I'll have a full announcement video in a few days all about it. So let's get into landscape photography and I want to talk about um, you know, what it takes to get good source material. Um, first of all, if you're working, you know, uh, if you're working plein air and you're, and you're sitting out there in the field, uh, you know, um, trying to, trying to work, you've got to deal with the weather, you've got to deal with the time of day, uh, the light change, you know, all those variables. And, um, but even if you're doing that and you want to supplement your work with some, uh, photographs, you know, while you're working, um, I thought this video, I just want to cover specifically how to go about getting those good, uh, photographs. Now, number one, um, there's no uh, simple way. You know, there's, as far as I know, and, and this is, uh, you know, I love painting landscapes. And if I have a good source photograph to work from, I feel like, you know, the battle's been won. I feel like, it, you know, I, I can get real excited if I have some good source material. And that's really difficult to do. And the, the only way that I know of to do it is to be out and about with your camera, especially during the golden hours. Um, the golden hours is, you know, once the sun comes up before it gets too high in the sky. Um, you know, this this landscape here of these of these buildings was taken during the golden hours, and you'll notice that the the light parts where the sun is hitting the building and the shadow parts are not dramatically different because the because the sun is low in the sky, so it doesn't have the intensity that it does in the middle of the day. And so in the middle of the day, what you get is something like this, where if you expose for the sky, the foreground becomes almost a silhouette and gets all black. And that's because in the middle of the day, the difference between uh, the bright lit areas and the dark shadow areas is so great that it's really hard to represent that in a print uh, uh, photograph. Um, you know, and, and nowadays, uh, what's really amazing is the cell phones um, are kind of leading the way with this artificial intelligence, you know, analyzing the image. And so the, the very latest cell phones that are out, and, and this, this one, um, this image here was taken with my Pixel 4. Um, but it really, this image blows me away because, you know, as, as somebody in the past, if I would have taken this picture, you know, back in the old days when I was working with film, um, this foreground would be completely black silhouette. You couldn't even make out the cars except for their taillights. Um, but the artificial intelligence has exposed the sky beautifully, but it's also brought up the foreground just a little bit to make it work. Um, or not just a little bit, but quite a bit. Um, and that's really uh, very difficult to do. Um, you know, even if you take two pictures and you expose one for the sky and you take another picture and you expose it for the foreground and you try to seam those together, you know, in Photoshop or whatever, um, speaking, you know, personally, um, I find that very difficult to do. And so it's really amazing what the artificial intelligence is doing nowadays. Um, and so the, the modern digital cameras that have interchangeable lenses are starting to incorporate a lot of this, uh, you know, smarts AI into their um, software that and, and, and the high end cameras now already have all those features. Um, but if you're using your cell phone, um, you know, and it's a it's a new one, especially a high end cell phone, you really can can take pictures even when the sky is, you know, difficult um, and it still works. Um, so anyway, that's something to think about. The, the downside to the, the cell phones is, at least from my uh, perspective, it's not always a downside, but the lens is a fisheye lens, meaning it, it kind of distorts things. Um, you know, it tries to take in the whole landscape. And in the process, it, you get curved lines and funny things going on. Um, but um, if you have a cell phone and you have any ability to use the, the telephoto, and I don't mean digital telephoto, but actual lens, like I think the new iPhones have lenses, 
you want to use the most telephoto or the one that has it that is the least fisheye um, and you'll get less distortion and if you have to take multiple pictures you can do that um, this picture here of this big landscape that I took several years ago was actually taken it uh, with my cell phone using a panorama mode where you can take all these pictures and then it seams them all together with the software and creates a, a, a picture like this. So, um, and now I'm rambling a little bit here. Let me get to my point. So, that, so there is no magic way to get good source material other than to be out and about and to take thousands of pictures, um, you know, uh, during and especially be out and about in the golden hours and be in a location where you're likely to find good source material. So maybe that's obvious and it goes without saying, but um, you know, a lot of people, they, what they do is they settle for something and then they wonder why their landscapes don't have any impact or whatever. Because um, if you're just you know, saying, well, what do I, let me go take some pictures you know, uh, to paint a landscape and you just go out and you get a few and you come home and you just settle for, for something that's mediocre, um, you know, that, that's the whole ball game right there. You've got to get out. You've got to uh, take thousands of pictures. You've got to be on location. You've got to especially be out during the golden hours. And then the other thing is, is that find an artist that paints landscapes that you love that's in the location where you are. In other words, you know, there's no point going out and studying landscape artists that paint in a desert uh, because you love desert scenes if you live in a location um, where there's a lot of lush greenery. I mean, obviously, um, if you were traveling, that'd be different. But, um, you know, in general, uh, you've got to spend so many hours being out and about looking for that good shot that you might, you know, if you take a walk every morning and every afternoon um, and you do that for like two weeks, you're bound to get something. And don't always look for the grand vistas. You know, sometimes it can just be a little corner of a driveway or, you know, a, a tree, you know, just on the plains. It doesn't have to be a, a grand vista. Um, you know, it's all a matter of taste, but um, go out and study those paintings that are in the environment where you live, and that's something that, uh, that, that, that at least has helped, been very helpful for me um, because you kind of are stuck with where you live in terms of getting, uh, spending enough time there to get the good uh, source material. Well, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.